So I'm a little late on talking about Dragon Ball Super episode 20, episode 126. I must have almost at 27, but I'm a little late on talking about it. Um, as you know, I didn't get a chance to see it on, uh, or rather, let me explain. I didn't see it Saturday, and then Sunday came around. I was planning on recording like early yesterday, Sunday morning, uh, but then the whole like Super Bowl thing came around. Uh, I was talking to my gra to my grandparents. I was like, oh, the Eagles are going to win. My grandpa was like, the Patriots are going to win. And my grandmother agreed with me that the Eagles were going to win. And the Eagles won. So congratulations to Eagles fans and the Eagles themselves for winning the Super Bowl. But today we're not talking about sports, even though I'm not even really that big of a sports fan. Anyways, we're here to talk about Dragon Ball Super. Today we're doing episode 126. And a lot of stuff happened in this episode. A lot of stuff that I kind of liked. A lot of stuff that has references to stuff that happened back in Dragon Ball Z. Notably, the whole stuff with like Majin Vegeta back in Dragon Ball Z and Dragon Ball Z and the Boo arc, and also an elimination of a specific character who who personally annoyed me last week. And for those of you who probably don't know, it's Topo. Topo got eliminated this week. I'm gonna go ahead and just say it, say that right now at the beginning of the video. Topo got eliminated this week. Uh, he kind of annoyed me last week because I was like, if he's not fighting like someone like that the writers just love to death, you know, like Goku and Vegeta, then it's like it's not even it's not even fair, you know, putting him against like Seventeen and Frieza. Apparently, the writers hate Frieza, even though he didn't make a short appearance in this week's episode. But the episode starts off where it left off last week with a couple of stuff with. Topo as a guy of destruction, of course, kind of manhandling Frieza, which you know is always interesting to watch again. And then he obviously starts fighting Seventeen. Seventeen's doing pretty well for himself. He's been doing pretty well towards the end of the whole tournament of power. Ever since like Anilaza, he's been doing surprisingly well, especially since, <clears throat> especially against an opponent that is literally a guy of destruction. You know, who's accepted the role as a guy of destruction, and I don't even know if Topo's still like a candidate for it, because after he got eliminated, he reverted back. So, uh, I don't know, kind of confusing. But uh, of course, Topo's using his, uh, you know, power of destruction, a high energy, and Seventeen starts noting up like a plan to like crumble up a whole bunch of rocks on top of him, but. This is Dragon Ball, so it's not surprising. Like, yeah, it's like catching catching, which is like the strongest like material in all of existence and any of the universes. But like, name one time in like Dragon Ball besides like early original Dragon Ball that like tumbling a whole bunch of rocks on top of someone actually like worked. So, eh, whatever. So. Uh, Topo starts shooting up a whole bunch of key attacks towards 17. 17 is just standing there taking the attacks. Then he gets down. He's on his knees. He's down on the ground. <clears throat> Excuse me for my voice. Um, Topo starts charging up like a big, uh, like ball uh, with like his hand. And then out of nowhere, someone shoots a beam. And who is that person? Uh, Frieza. Frieza shows up in this episode, and he doesn't really do much. Again, he doesn't really do all too much. He shoots a beam towards, like, the ball energy that was in Topo's hand, so <clears throat> it didn't really do anything. Uh, of course, Topo's just gonna throw him around. Uh, actually, something that was, was pretty interesting, something that we haven't seen in a while, is Frieza used his, uh, his paralysis, and he also used his telekinesis, which I feel like we haven't seen in quite a while, mainly the paralysis, not the telekinesis, but still very interesting. Kind of, kind of got to see something that we haven't seen in a little while. So, <coughs> <coughs> so yeah, it was uh, pretty interesting. Of course, Topo being the alpha, as Geekdom would say it, um, Topo's being the alpha. Goku and Vegeta are fighting each other, uh, and then for some reason, Topo starts interfering in the fight with. Uh, Jiren, Goku, and Vegeta. Uh, Jiren shoots off a blast, and then we don't see Seventeen and Frieza for the rest of the episode until Seventeen does make an appearance at the end of this week's episode. Frieza does not. It's not indicated that he's been eliminated or he like died because something that did happen in the episode. 
as far as we know, he's not eliminating. He's still in the tournament. He just didn't make an appearance this week. 17, however, though, is still in the tournament of power. He's still in the arena. He's still doing whatever he's what he what, doing whatever he can do. So, anyways. Topo starts fighting Vegeta, and then of course, like the whole big thing that everybody was really excited for. So of course they start they start swapping key attacks. Vegeta shoots off a final flash. Topo starts shooting off like his like high energy and stuff like that. Uh, <clears throat> we get a couple other shots of some attacks that Topo is doing against Vegeta. Vegeta is getting manhandled. He's getting destroyed. By Topo, of course, being a guy of destruction, but Vegeta is holding his own kind of a little bit. He's not really doing all too well. Then Vegeta is being thrown against the wall, and it kind of is reminiscent to how he did the same thing with Goku back in the Boo arc, uh, for you know, in the whole infamous fight with Majin Vegeta versus Super Saiyan 2 Goku. For those of you who do remind that, but mine is like the handcuff, like kind of like key energy rings. So uh, the big thing that happened in these next couple of scenes towards like the finale of the episode was. You know, right now Topo is like only interested in, you know, keeping his universe, you know, surviving. He wants to, you know, save Universe 11. But at this point, he realizes that justice in the way that he was before means nothing if it means that his universe gets destroyed. Which is why he accepted uh, the role in the sense of having the Hakai energy. Uh, the, the power of a god of destruction in order to be able to win this tournament of power and what happens is that uh, not Jiren, Topo charges up a whole big ball key attack and he shoots it toward Vegeta Vegeta is still pinned against the wall uh, the kind of like the, the debris of the arena and he's standing there or rather he's just kind of like up against it right and then he's like oh so he casted everything aside that was about him just in order to become stronger and in the sense of being able to win and then he starts having uh, a moment to himself where he remembers Bulma, Trunks, uh, Bra or Bula as the the whole Crunchyroll subtitles will we'll call her and other people as well and he starts remembering the promise that he made to Kappa in his pride as a Saiyan and that drives him to just not really care about you know power scaling and just charge himself over towards Topo and he starts wailing on this guy it was actually I when I was watching the episode I was like yeah this is a great Vegeta moment I kind of liked it it was very interesting to watch uh, he starts wailing on him he's, he's a he's being a beast it was amazing and then uh, a little bit later on, after a couple shots, Vermouth is actually kind of freaking out, and he's like, uh, "Why? Why is this, why is he being da da da? Right? Use all your all, use all your energy at all costs da 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 da." And then, you know, they're kind of continuing with like Vegeta, like, "Oh, you didn't have to do that. How can someone be so much of a of a loser? I guess whatever. You know, I won't be someone like you for someone who like." just forgets their pride stuff like that you know stuff similar to that i don't know what i'm trying to i don't know how i'm trying to explain it and if vegeta says that he's gonna use an attack that can't be destroyed something around that kind of like a kind of like a hakai level like energy attack and then of course like the biggest reference happens in this next scene and that's basically the whole majin vegeta final explosion kind of thing Vegeta's starting to do the exact same thing, and we get a shot of Piccolo, and he's like, is that, is that the attack that he did before against Majin Buu? And then we literally get a screenshot, it's a direct reference to what happened back in the Buu arc, it's a direct reference, and they just throw in the flashback, which was very interesting, I've only seen, I've only seen it in the English dub, because I haven't had really the amount of time to be able to watch, you know, Dragon Ball and Dragon Ball Z in Japanese, which I do plan on doing eventually, very, very soon, hopefully. But this is my first time watching in Japanese, and it was actually really cool, and I really enjoyed watching it. So, yeah, so basically, Vegeta's, you know, trying to do the final explosion attack. Of course, Topo is like, yeah, okay, I gotta create this big ball of a Hakai energy. And so they're starting to clash against each other. Uh, Vegeta manages to push through towards the Hakai energy. The whole like ball of energy of he's of him being engulfed in it and the Hakai energy just explodes, it's destroying the arena. It was really cool. I thought it was, I thought it was really really cool. <clears throat> I thought it was really really cool. Whole arena just explodes. Everything is just destroyed. It's absolutely fantastic. I actually really enjoyed it. And Topo is eliminated. Topo finally then gets eliminated at the end of the episode, and. Yeah, Dispo's like kind of like surprised about like 
what happened? And then the angel was like, oh, well, he did a good job. Da, 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 da. And then the Zenos are like, yeah, that was a really awesome fight. Duh, right? And then obviously the Grand Priest was like, oh, yeah, Topo, Topo's out. That's, that's cool. <laughs> and then they obviously couldn't tell if Vegeta had sacrificed himself, if he had given his life, if he had died, or if he was still somehow in the arena. Because, uh, as you know, with the final explosion attack, that uses up like a lot of stamina in the video games. And Vegeta, when he uses the attack in the video games, he doesn't really like die, which is kind of ironic because that because he only really died using that attack in the Buu Saga. And in any single time he uses that in like any of the video video games, which is obviously outside of the normal canon, but it's whatever. So Vegeta's alive. Vegeta's alive, and Piccolo actually makes um, he actually notes the fact that. <coughs> Excuse me. He actually notes the fact that I guess his body is like so so much more powerful than it was before that he can use the attack without having to worry about giving his life. But Beerus is also Beerus also points out that it's like, yeah, that's cool and all, but you know he kind of used up a lot of his energy, so he can't really do much. Seventeen gets out of like some debris, some rubble. Uh, he appears to be hurt, but other than that, he's you know he's there. He's just chilling. Uh, of course, he didn't get illuminated, so it was pretty cool, I guess. And so now we're down. We're down to Goku, Vegeta, Goku, Vegeta, Frieza, and 17 versus Jiren. Jiren is the final fighter in a different universe that isn't Universe 7. And Jiren actually says something that actually kind of like surprised me because, you know, you know, he's a part of the Pride Troopers, and the Pride Troopers kind of like help each other out and stuff like that, right? And he kind of like says something like, oh, how pathetic, I expected more from you, right? Towards Topo. And I was like, what are you talking about? He did just fine. And it kind of surprised me because, you know, isn't that supposed to be like his friend? Isn't Topo supposed to be like Jiren's like ally? So I find it kind of surprising that uh, he, he said that about him. And I was like, why? I was like, why didn't they make him say that? Is it for like any specific reason? Even Goku was like, "Yeah, hey, how can you, how can you say that about your friend, dog? That's fucking, that's fucking stupid." So what happened, right? So, anyways, Jiren gives everyone kind of just like a, a smug ass smirk towards everyone. He congratulates uh, Vegeta for beating Topo, which surprised me as well. That surprised me as well. And then, of course, the finale of the episode is. He ends off powering up, and he's fi he's finally getting serious. He's about to show like his final like full on strength, and uh, these next couple weeks are going to be very interesting. And we'll have to wait and see what happens. Uh, hopefully, something that keeps us interested, obviously. But I doubt that it won't that it won't keep us interested. It'll probably be very interesting to just to see it all happen. But we'll have to wait and see, of course. So anyways, I think I rambled on for long enough. If you guys did enjoy, be sure to leave a like. And if you're new to the channel, please consider, please consider hitting that subscribe button. And if you haven't yet, push that notification button so you never miss a new video while you're at it. And yeah, I'll go ahead and see you guys in the next video. Have a wonderful life. Be good people. And I'm out.